Mr. President. Senator for New Hampshire. Reserving the right to object. You know, one of Congress's most basic jobs is the power of the purse. Americans rely on this body to provide federal funds for programs that support national defense, small businesses, border defenses, conservation of public lands, food assistance for the poor, um, and so much more. <clears throat> and as a long-standing member of the Appropriations Committee, I am proud of the work that the Appropriations Committee has done to meet the needs of this nation. And as a senior senator from New Hampshire, when I talk to small business owners, educators, healthcare professionals, community leaders across my state, it is unfortunate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that not all of the needs of our state are being met. And for years, New Hampshire, like most small states in this country, has received among the lowest apportionments in the country from formula grant programs that are administered by our federal agencies. Congress has long used earmarks or congressionally directed spending to address funding gaps and inequities between the states. And in fact, um, Senator Judd Gregg, who I served, had the pleasure of serving with both when he was governor and I was in the state Senate, and then when he was in the Senate and I got elected, was a big supporter of congressionally directed spending because he believed, like I do, that I know better how money should be spent in New Hampshire than a bureaucrat here who was making decisions about how to spend federal dollars. Congressionally directed spending levels the playing field for states like New Hampshire and even for Indiana to ensure that our communities can get their fair share to address our local needs. Unfortunately, back in 2011, when Congress instituted a ban on congressionally directed spending, we ceded the power of the purse to unelected officials in the executive branch. And while I know that many of these individuals are dedicated bureaucrats, they are public servants, they don't necessarily understand the needs of New Hampshire in the same way that I do as somebody who has represented that state for decades. So that's why I was very pleased that under the leadership of Chairman Leahy and Ranking Member Shelby, Congress once again passed a bipartisan bill to include congressionally directed spending in our budget process. And when we did that, the Appropriations Committee instituted some major reforms to improve accountability and transparency in the process of congressionally directed spending. I'm going to talk about some of those reforms because while I appreciate the perspective of my colleague from Indiana, I, I think he has um, not pointed out the reforms that exist in the process of congressionally directed spending. First of all, members are required to certify that neither we nor any member of our immediate family would financially benefit from the requests that are made. Secondly, those congressionally directed spending requests have to be made in writing and posted online by the member and the Appropriations Committee so that the public has every opportunity to view the name and location of the project, the intended recipient, and the purposes of that request. For example, the requests for fiscal year 2023 are available online right now before they would be available if this government, this administration, were determining how to spend that money. So the senator from Indiana doesn't have to wait until those Senate bills are posted to inspect congressionally directed spending projects. The reforms also include a 1% cap on discretionary spending for CDS items and a ban on congressionally directed spending items to for-profit entities. Finally, the Appropriations Committee requires the Government Accountability Office to audit a sample of enacted congressionally directed spending items to ensure that Congress is being held accountable for these projects. Mr. President, the Chair and Ranking Member instituted these reforms to restore the trust of the American people in the appropriations process, and I believe it's working. And I can tell you as I travel around New Hampshire, it's one of the things that I hear from people, <coughs> excuse me, in our communities that they're interested in. They want to know about the appropriations process, and they want to know 
What other opportunities are there to support initiatives that may not fit within some grant program, that they may not be able to raise money in the private sector for, but that are very important for our communities? The resolution sponsored by the Senator from Indiana would require the chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee to certify that not just Senate earmarks have been disclosed, but that all House earmarks have been disclosed. I think that bill is a solution in search of a problem. The House already has its own rule that governs congressionally directed spending items, and it's required to identify these items. It knows what its members have requested, and it's responsible for disclosing them. Requiring the Senate to confirm that the House has done its job before we can consider a message from the House is unnecessary, and it could stop consideration of appropriations bills um, before they ever get here. The resolution sponsored by my colleague from Indiana would change Senate Rule 44 in ways that could have unintended consequences and could delay critical funding for projects that are important in my home state of New Hampshire and in so many states across this country. So given all of those concerns, I object. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator for Indiana. And I'll do respect to uh, the senator from uh, New Hampshire, Senator Shaheen. Back in 2007, both New Hampshire senators, Greg and Sununu, as well as all 98 senators that voted back then, I think intended not only for the letter of the law, they wanted the spirit of the law to be aligned with it. We now have a new way, something that can come over here, that violates a standing rule of the Senate, and I'm guessing it'll probably be used again down the road, where we have to get something, we have no time to look at it, and I think the spirit of the law would say that we need the 48 hours and the ability to know who's on it, who isn't. Uh, and then in the bigger picture, I'd ask this question, and the American public ought to listen, ask it themselves. Is this place getting more responsible? Are we giving better value to you? Do we budget? Do we use regular order? And most importantly, are we creating uh, more and more deficit and more and more debt? And we know what the answer is. I talked about it for 15 minutes yesterday evening. We are doing everything we can to avoid the rules, pay attention to the spirit of the law, and in what we're delivering, it's a product I think that shows less and less responsibility out of a body that should not be making rules that make it easier to run deficits and go into debt. It ought to be the opposite. And if we don't, I think future generations will hold us accountable for the things that we seem to do best, which are the gimmicks to get around budgeting, avoiding the rules on a technicality. The American public deserves better. I yield the floor. President. Senator for New Hampshire. Mr. President, I ask that at 145 the Senate proceed to executive session and the Senate immediately vote on confirmation of executive calendar 902, the nomination of Sharif Einahal. Is there objection? Without objection. 